Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Star Citizen. So this guide is going to be more aimed toward brand new backers who've never played Star Citizen rather than returning backers because it's going to be a, a, a bit of a waste of time because I'm going to touch on stuff that you probably already know. So let, let's get to it. Essentially, Star Citizen has four modules. There's the, the Persistent Universe, which is often referred to as PU, and I'm probably going to refer to it as the PU myself because I'm, I'm used to, to it. So just so you remember, PU Persistent Universe. So this is where you essentially where you play Star Season, where you, you fly your ship, you do your missions, you do trading, you do whatever you want that's in, in the Persistent Universe. Then you have Star Marine, which is the FPS arena style game where you probably want to, you know, get used to FPS type of gameplay. Like, I mean, train with your friends or even like just, you know, play a random match with random people and um, uh, get brutally murdered. That'll, um, you know, <laughs> teach you a few lessons. <laughs> I know, I learned a few myself. Alright, anyways, after that you've got Arena Commander. So Arena Commander is the same as Star Marine, but except it's inst instead of being FPS gameplay, it's ship gameplay. So it's the same, I mean, you've got, well, you've got one more um, mode here, which is uh, the race, but everything else, I mean, Vanduul Swarm, Pirate Swarm is just like players against AIs, so PvE type of gameplay, and Battle Royale or Squadron gameplay is uh, PvP stuff. Battle Royale, I think, is um, everybody against everybody, and uh, Squadron Battle is uh, team deathmatch, essentially. Uh, you can customize your ships here with this display here. Uh, you need to remember that you need to have like equipment purchased, either rented or either rent it through here or um, you know your own stuff that you purchased what happens in here just like in Star Marine does not carry over to the persistent universe see I'm making efforts to remember to say persistent universe not PU so essentially let's choose something um, well the ships that I have are displayed here the ships that I don't have from this manufacturer are displayed here and I can't rent them I don't believe um, I, don't, I don't believe I have uh, you know the the rec rental equipment credit that's what it means to rent any of those ships so I'm not gonna bother with that but essentially you choose something here you choose select ship and then here you get all the um, equipment you can change and um, you can see in use means that you have well however number of those and they're already stuffed into a ship and you might be able to take for instance in here i can see uh in the cut last i've got two of those um cold snap coolers i will assume yes that's what it is so i can take those coolers outside of the cut last and stuff it in this ship but that might not be something you want to do Especially since the Cutlass probably comes with um, lower tier, yep, lower tier equipment. Not recommendable, but you, you get the, the point of it. And it works the same for weapons, shields, anything you want. So whatever you have, stuff into a ship. For Star Marine, you need to remember one thing. It's that you need to customize your load loadout first before you start doing any matches. And you have three types of armor. You've got the light, the medium, and the heavy. Pretty simple. The light one is going to be only having one uh, primary weapon um, hard point. So you can only have one primary weapon and one pistol on your hip. So here you got the one on the back, one on the hip. And the medium and the heavy allow you to actually use two primary weapons. So like two weapons on the back. But it make, they make you increasingly slower and um, use uh, increasingly more stamina. So... I mean, you it's up to you to make the choice. There is no better or worse choices. Every player ha plays differently. I know that in games like Payday, I like to go with just the suit and, you know, suit pistols, and uh, I wreck like that. If I go as a tank, I just get wrecked, and uh, I'm completely useless. So every player plays differently. So, yeah, you tailor the thing uh, as you want. 
And the fourth module that I didn't talk about and that wasn't on the screen is actually the hangers. So you have the hangers that you have available. Maybe you'll only have one, maybe you'll have more. It depends on the ships that you have. And I believe the one that everybody has is the uh, self-land. It's not very uh, useful anymore. I mean, if you want to just like stare at your ships, you can do it in the PU, but in here, at least you're in a sort of a vacuum, so you don't really have to worry about, you know, anyone just wrecking or wrecking your ship, or maybe, you know, getting your ship stored by the um, overbearing uh, air traffic controllers. So, you just walk up to an... Oh! Sorry about that, but you walk up to any one of those nodes on the floor. Um, the issue is, <laughs> you need to know already where they are. And what type they are they are so here yet yeah, floor size 5. I don't think I have anything to spawn here Yep, there we go nothing But for ships you need to be on the uh, sort of like landing pad area So here you've got vehicle size 1 and 2 so that's a list of the ships you can uh, spawn in here So aura Oops Aura MR is the ship that you're probably gonna have maybe you'll have a Mustang Alpha, but Aura and Mustang are the uh, the first ship for pretty much everybody. And, um, I mean, there isn't much you can do in here. There, it used to be the place where you go to, um, you, you would go to, you know, swap out your weapons, and you have your weapons in here. That's a multi-barrel machine gun. Gatling gun? Gatling style machine gun? Whatever. Anyways, you can spawn your ship here, you can interact with them. I don't believe... Well, let's enter the ship. By the way, I was holding F here to make this uh, little cursor appear. And one little thing, I'll repeat that for the PU, but when you choose enter ship, it opens the door, ladder, whatever you need. The character climbs in and everything closed back up behind you. Just so you know, because that means that when you use this action, you don't need to worry about anyone getting in your ship behind you because the ship will be closed and it's locked. So no one should be able to get in your ship. Not that way, at least. So, pressing T, you have a light. And this uh, particular ship has a bed. And you can get in here, and you can use the bed to log out when you're in the persistent universe. In here, there, there's absolutely no reason to do that. Um, so yeah, you can interact with your ship. I mean, the Aurora doesn't have a lot of stuff, so... I mean, that's about all there is to do with the Aurora. So... Now that we are here, there's one thing that I would like to talk about. It's about Arena Commander. We've seen what it is, but I haven't talked yet about what you should use it for. And that is to get used to flying in, in, and like, you know, the way your ship handles and how you fly ships in general, but really get used to the way you're supposed to fly in Star Citizen. And because Star Citizen is an extremely complex game, I mean, in terms of keybinds, and I've, I know there's games that are extremely complex, but you have a lot of keybinds here, and that's only the basics of the default settings. You can buy, buy, buy way more commons, and uh, like there's so much you can bind that a single keyboard is not enough with, even without control and shift as modifier keys so this is the basics I mean you, you're gonna want to get to this place here a lot and at the beginning I would recommend maybe not filling too much with the, the the controls so basically how you get here is pressing the escape key you get getting this menu click options and keybinds and you're gonna land on the um, the key map essentially in here you can choose which one you can you want to see uh, flight on foot and uh, whatever uh, I would recommend heavily using the advanced key map because Oops, sorry about that. Because the advanced key map is the one that will give you what you actually need. The basic stuff is just really like I don't know why. Uh, I don't know who it's for, but it's not for people who want to play the game. But you've got the basics, so I mean, you you'll see that on your own time, at your own pace. I'll I'll get to the basics later. If you happen to want to 
add or modify one of the key binds, you can go to the advanced control customization and here it, it's it's uh it's a bit overwhelming but eventually you'll find the stuff you want and you can bind stuff and not everything is bound to functions but if there is something you need that isn't already bound you can just you know find it in here and um go on for instance there is um in the cockpit, there is a function to open all doors and lock doors or unlock them. And there is um, an interaction in the cockpit. So you don't need to have a keybind for that. But me, I don't know, for whatever reason you have, doesn't matter. You might want to have that bound to a key while well, you just, uh, you know, well, you know how that works. You're used to video games, right? And of course, you've got binds for whatever other controller you have i personally use a gamepad for everything that's relating to uh driving because i like that i prefer that to um using the keyboard so yeah that's uh, where you go you also have oh sorry about that you also have the same uh you know mapping image and uh you can also use joysticks You're probably already aware of that but just in case there you go and uh, yeah, that's about all we need to know about the uh, the keybinds. You'll uh, figure out the rest on your own. So now, uh, there's a little device that you need to be familiar with because you're going to be using it a lot, even though you're going to hate it. It is called the Mobby Glass. And what is it? Well, that's that thing, you know. Here, that little thing that is uh, stuck to your... Uh, essentially to your uh, your watch. It's, it's, it's your watch. Apple Watch or whatever other competitive device Google makes. I'm not very well versed in that kind of stuff, personally. <laughs> Anyways, the Mobby Glass is your all-in-one smart device where you do everything from uh, setting up your navigation, choosing your outfits, accepting missions, communicating, communicating with other people, ordering service at the service station, yeah, everything. So at the bottom left here, this is all your apps. So you have the com links, which is where you would go to type, you know, your chat and stuff. <laughs> type something that is intelligible, not random gibberish. Um, this is the hangar, so there is no one. I'm here because I want to be in a place where I can show you everything without interfering with other people. So that's why there's nothing here. The Okay, so this is the vehicle loadout manager, but you might... You will, actually, you will always, almost always, hear it named the VMA, Vehicle Manager App. This is how it's called in development, it's what, what it's called in Spectrum, this is how I personally call it when I tell people to go in there. So, if you hear VMA, that is this app with a little ship. And this is where you go to, uh, you know, customize everything. It's the same thing normally that as the um in the menu in the arena commander ship cu customization menu but this is available while you're in the pu so when you're in the pu and you want to customize a ship you don't need to go back to arena commander to do that you can do this from here however when the ship is spawned in the pu you cannot modify it in any way it's uh, if you want to modify it, you need to claim it in the insurance. We'll talk about that later, and uh, then you can modify it again. So it's it's exactly the same uh, way. To, you know, the way it works is the same as um, Arena Commander ship customization menu. Uh, you have your different tabs for different stuff, and in here you'll have a few more options than Arena Commander because in Arena Commander you don't need to travel. You just have you know. The map where you start and that's it in here you are able to customize this happens to be the um quantum drives which is what allows you to go from one place to the next uh, it's you know the fast travel essentially a device and various quantum drives have various speeds and for spooling up for you know range and stuff so you, you know one ship will not be equivalent to the next one when it comes to quantum traveling. The bigger the ship, essentially, 
uh, the faster it's going to be. And I'm not talking about, you know, that like the Hornet here. Is it going to be a little faster than the Gladius here, which is just a little bit, you know, a little bit shorter, a little bit more nimble? No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Gladius, for instance, being short, uh, slower than, say, the Origin 600, which is like a hulking piece of ship compared to the Gladius. There, there's way, way bigger ships that will dwarf this thing, and it's going to look like a smart car. <laughs> but... I'm talking about this kind of size difference, not just, you know, this ship is like a few meters longer, so it must be a little faster. No, no. It's really the size of the component itself. And this has size 2, which you will be hearing called medium. Essentially, there's size 0, which is vehicle size, then 1, 2, 3, which is, uh, you know, small, medium, large, and then there's capital, capital size. So, yeah, that's your four sizes. Uh, five, I guess, technically. Um, so, yeah, that's the size of components, and that's true for everything except the weapons. The weapons, where, where they're guns or missiles, go from one, size one is the smallest, there's no size zero, to 12, and 12, I think, is... Um, well, that's the kind of stuff you're not going to see in-game for a long time because I think the biggest size right now is size 6. And anything bigger than that is for ships that are the size of a freaking town, <laughs> essentially. I'm exaggerating a bit, but yeah, that's for ships that are much bigger than that. So essentially, you click on anything, any, any, any one slot you have here. You click on it and you see a list of what is available to basically attach to this slot. Some things don't necessarily make sense, like for instance, the right wing gun, so that is this guy here, that's the left wing, that's fine, <laughs> the game just doesn't know the difference between left and right, so let's say the other right uh, gun, uh, it lets you attach a remote turret, which uh, this one I believe is from the Valkyrie, which is the ship you see right behind here in the hangar. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense you have this here, but you can do it, so be a little careful that for a gun you choose an actual gun and not a remote turret. Oh, ooh, ooh, damn it. Don't want to do that. Um, it's, you know, you shouldn't be having too much trouble figuring out what goes where, but just be a little careful, just in case. And the next app is called the Equipment Manager, but you will most likely hear it called the PMA, Personal Manager App. And it's essentially the same as the ship stuff, but for your character. So you can customize, well, we don't have any clothing right now, and I'll explain that in just a second. But each tab, you know, controls everything you, you need to control. The undersuit is essentially the EVA suit, like what you need to just survive outside. And that's where the armor pieces attach to. So if you don't have an undersuit, you can't have armor pieces. And you can't have a helmet. And if you don't have a helmet, you're not going to survive outside. So yeah, that kind of sucks. <laughs> you want to have an undersuit. You start with one, nothing to worry about. However, armor, you need to buy. We'll see that later in the next video. But essentially, that's where, yeah, you know... Attach everything, so you need the undersuit before you can equip the armor. You need the armor before you can equip any weapons or utility, which I know doesn't make sense that the armor is not right next to undersuit, but whatever, it's the way it is. So yeah, just know that. Certain armor, like I said in uh, Star Marine, the light armors, that they will not allow you to equip more than one long weapon on your back, so just know about that. Also, remember the fact that not all armors, for instance, it's the chest piece that matters, by the way, for that. So I'm wearing right now a light chest piece, and you know that because, well, not all uh, armor types actually tell you that the, the armor is light, medium, or heavy. You'll just need to know the damage reduction. So normally, light armor is, is a 20 or 30% uh, reduction, unless that changed. The medium armors usually give you 40% damage reduction, and the heavy ones give you 60% damage reduction. So yeah, I, it do, might not seem like much, but trust me, in practice, like 
in a practical situation is gonna make a world of difference. The difference between heavy and light is worlds apart. Both in terms of damage and in terms of speed at which you can move. So the light armor comes only with four um, ma well, m magazine slots or... Yeah, magazine slots. And only one uh, weapon slot on the back. But if I was to change my armor to a medium, the Inquisitor core is a medium armor. And I know that because I know that. <laughs> it's not said here and you might not necessarily know that before you buy it, but I'll, I, I'm telling you, the Inquisitor core is a medium armor. And it does have a secondary weapon in the back. Well, just like put anything in here, I don't care. Here, the white one, because that way you know the difference. And it does come with two additional magazine slots, which are located here and here. Uh, let's attach something. Uh, we had the arrowhead, so let's attach a magazine with the, for the arrowhead. And all those magazines are stuff that I, not, that I did not start with. I had to buy them. So we'll talk about that in the next video. Again, not for right now. But this is it. Yeah, it works the same as the ship. And as you do with the ships, before you leave, you click here, save changes and equip. Because otherwise, anything you changed here is just going to be cancelled. So see, here, you got the sniper rifle and uh, other sniper rifle. But if I don't click save and equip, my character here does not have the second sniper rifle. So... Now, for the Stanton system, we're going to move to the Persistent Universe. And yes, I'm trying very hard not to say the PU because I want to make sure that you will remember the actual name of things so that avoids confusion. Because there is PU and PTU, and PTU has nothing to do with PU. The PTU is the public test universe and what it is is essentially the equivalent of the experimental branch you might be used uh, with steam games for instance and this uh, the ptu is very buggy so you probably don't want to deal with that right away but right now we have the stanton system in game and um, this app is here. The skyline is the actual map of the universe. So in here, I'm in Port Alisar. And if you zoom, zoom out, you can see there is Crusader, which is not in game yet. So don't try to go. Well, you can go there, but there's no pl actual planet to go to. There is Daymar, Yela, and Selin, which are all three moons of Crusader. And you've got oh, the zoom is pretty twitchy. Anyways, the comms arrays are like little stations you can uh, go to and do missions for. But I'm not gonna get into details about every single one of those. So yeah, the stations here will uh, the the little comms array will uh, talk about that in the next video. But you got the three moons. Each each of the three moons have a station. So selling here as a security post, Korea. We'll talk about that. Well, actually, we can talk about it now. Um, it's where you go when you have a criminality, um, criminality rating, which is called Crime Stat. It's the, the wanted level from GDA, essentially. If you're familiar with GDA, that's what it is. So you go there to clear your, uh, you know, your record. Yella has Grim Hex, which you can see here. Um, it's a bit of a sketchy place, but you can find some stuff there, so you... You're probably going to want to visit the place. And Daymar has... It's not going to be very useful to you right now. It's just for, for a few missions. But it has the Colex shipping hub. And it's closed. Because there's been an accident. So, yeah, they don't really operate anymore. So, it doesn't really matter. You'll figure it out once you play the game. I don't want to spoil it for you. Because I, th I think it's one of the very interesting missions that are available in the game. The next ones are the journal, which, I mean, you it's its something you'll read once and then you'll forget about it. I mean, it gives you a little bit of lore and uh, a bit of a setting for the um, for what is available in-game, essentially. The Liveworks AR, um, it's actually not used as such, but it's the application that you use 
through the the VMA and PMA. It's um, I mean, it's the, the application that is the underlying app for both the PMA and the VMA. But you don't use the this application I like that as a, as an application on its own. It's just a reminiscent from the old versions of Star Citizen. Next is the the vehicle maintenance service app, which is something that you open when you want like basically service at a service station and when you land on a pad that has the little uh, this little ranch icon here that means that you can have the service available to you and you have to be in the, your in sh your ship you have to be in the pilot seat and you have to be landed on the pad and immobile then you click on whatever service you want click confirm and you're getting the service it doesn't always work perfectly i mean it's a game in development so there's going to be some screw ups here and there but yeah, that's uh, you can buy. Uh, well, repair is pretty obvious. Restock is buying ammo. The icon ma makes a very good work at uh, telling you what it does. Hydrogen fuel is something we'll talk about probably later. Yep, that's later on my list. And quantum fuel. That's your two fuels. And then this is the contract manager. This is the uh, missions that are offered to you. So yeah, that's the very basics. And uh, we'll get into more details about flight shopping and uh you know how to work in the game how to make money in one of the future videos so thanks very much for watching i hope it's been helpful to you and i will see you later take care guys